I'm going to just perhaps say why we might want to build a pathway, uh, why it's a useful thing to do. Uh, and there is this old saying, of course, that a picture is worth a thousand words, whether you associate that with a, a Chinese proverb or a Napoleon supposedly says something very similar. But I think it's, it's recognised. We all are kind of visual animals. We look at things, we understand things a lot quicker than we might understand things on the, on the page. So by actually drawing a diagram, you're actually saying this is formally what I believe. You're capturing what you think you know and you're in... in not using language to describe it, you're using a picture to describe it. We have, as you've seen uh, yesterday, ability to look at large numbers of genes and understand what they are. Now, when you look at that list that comes from a, a microarray or another genomics platform, then actually what you're looking at is something called a gene symbol and a gene descriptor. Now, these are names which have been systematically assigned to every gene in the human body or, or in other species but actually they're quite often not the name that is used within the literature. So that when you read about a given bit of biology, often the language that the biologists are using is not referring straight back to the gene name that you'll find in the gene list. So, and, and quite often you'll find uh, situations where essentially there are five different names for the same protein. Three names, two names are often in use. And so you can read two papers by two different authors and actually not realise that they're talking about the same thing. Okay, it's confusing. It's the Tower of Babel in, in genomics world. Um, so we want to, by actually taking this idea of drawing a picture, you're placing that protein in its site of action. You're, you're saying, well, actually, I understand what it does, and I understand where it does it. And so from that point of view, putting it and making that mark is very useful. And by actually drawing it all out in some detail, you're beginning to build up a picture of how all of this stuff might work together. So you read one paper, it might describe one interaction in quite a lot of detail, but of course it describes that interaction. It doesn't say how or what happens after that or before that. And when you start drawing diagrams, you begin to build up those pictures uh, of the overall event. So once you have these diagrams, in principle, you can map data to it. So you can actually say, here's a list of genes, throw it onto your diagram and you can see where those genes are mapping to your actually big picture view. You can use these methods to capture the latest ideas. So a new paper comes out, you can say, ah, right, I'm going to modify my diagram now to, to capture this new bit of information and that actually maybe solves something or, or helps me with a dilemma that I had previously. And you can potentially, hopefully, use these diagrams and say, actually, looking at this diagram now, I realise that this might actually be something that I want, might want to go and test in the lab. So this was something that came from Laura's work. We were building some pathways and she said, actually, there's a real dilemma here. And so now they're actually building transgenic animals to try and solve the problem that she identified from the pathway. Okay. So, and this is the last part of the course. So we're probably up to the, the coffee break we're going to go on and talk about drawing pathways. And then after, I want to spend a bit of time about how you can use those pathway models as a basis for actually running simulations. So in terms of uh, the overall type of pathways we might consider, and this isn't an exhaustive list, so of course metabolic pathways. So metabolic pathways actually, actually predates signaling pathways by many years. So the biochemists, even from the 1950s, 60s onwards, were trying to map out how a given metabolite changed from one form to another the basis of uh, glycolysis, the TCA cycle, classic pathway. So in some ways, the biochemists were well ahead of us because they were tracking how one thing got turned to another and how a sort of whole metabolism worked because they could measure metabolites. They didn't actually often know which were the enzymes which were tra transforming one protein, to, uh, one uh, biochemical to the next, but they actually knew that that transformation took place. And so they often started off with this idea that, well, this goes to this, but they wouldn't know what caused that reaction. They worked that out, uh, and that was their driving force. I've mentioned already signaling pathways. So signaling pathways, we think of these pathways of interactions whereby perhaps something interacts with the surface of a cell, and there's a series of events that may lead to a transcriptional change or some adjustment in the cell's thing. Again, we have quite a lot of knowledge for some for a lot of the well-known receptors. We know an awful lot about the events following the interaction between the ligand uh, and the receptor. And of course, we can start building these picked ups. 
to the level of uh, of cell to cell communication. So this happens to this cell. What happens to the next cell? How do these things? And we can begin to use the methods uh, that we're going to look at today, not only for looking at sort of these biochemical reactions, but mapping reactions between different organ systems, if you like. So we know this happens in the brain. This then causes this to be released. This acts on this peripheral tissue. So the kind of methods that we're going to look at today have been used to map all of these type of pathways. And you can do it. And, and we'll, we'll discuss some of the limitations of this as we go forward. So as I mentioned, these guys were well ahead of us. I think I certainly, even in my, uh, even in my O level uh, school days, this was on the wall of the school, and it, I think it took some guy. It was done pretty much done by a single single guy. Can't remember his name, but essentially he drew over the years this pathway, and he spent six months of it in the year organizing biochemistry into this wonderful view. I say, trouble is. Yeah, it lists all the biochemicals, but it doesn't actually tell you all the proteins. So for, for our omics world, it's, it's not an entirely useful resource, but it is a, a testament to what you can do with a bit of effort and, and perseverance and a lot of knowledge. 